Welcome back guys, we are coming at you with another leg day here with Sherelle Grant. We're running through a second phase of programming for your contest prep. So how many weeks out are you now? 21 weeks, 20 weeks this coming Saturday. Right, 20 weeks in what, two, in tomorrow? Yeah, 20 oh, weeks yeah, out. Friday. Okay, so yeah, five months out roughly. God, that's ages, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so previously we were doing a high frequency glute program. Now we've switched to upper lower. Mm. Today we're going to take you through the lower body day. Interesting thing though is now we're working with some lower reps. So for instance, we're starting off with um, hack squat for eight, six, four reps. So one set of eight, one set of six, one set of four. And then we are, um, we're doing that as a theme across all the other days as well. Where we're yeah. doing one or two heavy movements for eight, six, four reps, and then the rest of the workout. Mm. So I guess that kind of begs the question of how important is lifting heavy. Do you think it's important for building muscle and why are you doing it now in your contest prep? Yeah, it's it's obviously important for building muscle, like training to failure. Like training to failure? Yeah, okay. training to failure. Oh, yep. training close to failure, right. right? So I think it's really important to make sure that you are using lower rep schemes and even a set of four, is that really that low? Like a lot of people might do threes or twos or one right. rep maxes, but I don't usually go that low. Um, I think it's important to be able to push heavy loads and build up intensity like throughout your training and make sure that you are going from like accumulation to sort of intensification and cycling the two. Right, so what does that mean for, for two year olds out there like me who don't know what accumulation intensification is? So like accumulation, accumulating like a lot of volume, um, a lot of sets, a lot of reps over the right. course of a training block which is what we've just done pretty much with the okay. glute volume, mm -hmm. um, focusing on lower body obviously and now moving back to the upper lower body split, it just allows us to have more recovery um, throughout the week in terms of lower body uh, whilst also still pushing some high intensities with load. Yeah, I think that's kind of interesting is because from the last video, a lot of people were asking, hey, what's the benefit of doing this high volume phase for glutes? We did four glute days a week. What's the point in that? One thing, because you're in a deficit. Mm. Like, can you build muscle, yes or no? Um, but they're asking, like, what's the reason behind that? And I think where they kind of missed the boat on that is, yes, we want muscle building. That's something I think you can achieve mm. through a prep. Um, but more importantly is you're creating this conditioning response in your glutes yeah. or in your lower body. Yeah which is going to help you recover better when we do heavy work now, which mm. is probably where you're probably going to get more growth from, would, yeah. you, would you say? Yeah, and I also feel, I don't know if you feel the same, but now using some, like the glute drive, the hack squat, like I'm stronger right. on those pieces of equipment, especially the glute drive, because I always hit like a threshold in terms of strength. Mm. Um, and that's why it's important to have variety and change up rep schemes and allow your body to recover in different ways. Right. So that when you add those things back in, you can push intensity. And even though it's important to lift heavy weights, it's also you know, just as important to make sure that you are having variety and changing things up because you can't just keep lifting heavier and heavier. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And I think that's, um, I mean, I'm loving this kind of work. I've always preferred lifting heavier. Mm. Um, and I think when you lift heavier like this, like say doing a four rep max, um, or close to a four rep max compared to say an eight rep max, um, it also allows you to not have to go, I guess, as close to failure. Whereas if you did a 12 rep max, for it to really be beneficial, mm. you probably have to push to that failure point. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And even from a joint perspective though, like I find the high volume stuff good, but you can't always just flog yourself with heaps of volume, otherwise you just end up into this like overtrained stage, which I've been in, like mm. hamstring stuff. So I think it's important to be able to cycle through um, both. And this is less volume across the week in terms of lower body stuff. Upper body's still the same, um, but yeah. How many sets are we doing right now in a week? For lower body, uh, rough think estimate? About, oh, rough it, maybe 30, okay. 30 sets. And so what were we doing in the last phase? 36. Okay, yeah. okay. So, so we it's have quite a humongous drop. Not a huge drop, yeah. but enough. And in terms of, I guess, it's not just the sets, it's also the reps, like the actual, they've scaled down right. a lot. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I feel it. Like, yeah. I was fried after that last phase. I right. was fried. I did that for six weeks. Yeah. Um, and I knew that we needed a change. For sure, for sure. Are you going to keep this going for... How long? I think four or five weeks. Okay. I'm going to see how I feel next week. I might add one more week, but normally I'll just do four week training blocks. Yeah. Six weeks is a bit too much mm. um, for me. If you were like, um, I guess, new to training, I feel like you can get away with six weeks, um, yeah. but I prefer four week mesos. Okay. Now, exercise selection wise, we're still doing a lot of the same movements. Mm. Like, we're still doing um, like dumbbell Romanian deadlifts. We didn't do half squats, we haven't done them in a long time, so that's new. You're still doing glute drive throughout the week. Um, what kind of things do you 
think about exercise selection when you go to this kind of phase versus a high volume phase. And um, that's for the primary movements, but also like more the accessories, what, like we're doing walking lunges, whereas we did split squats last time. What's going on there? Mm. So changing variety, like making sure that you're having variety with your movements as well as challenging like dy more dynamic movements as well. So that's right. what the walking lunges are there for rather than like I guess a Bulgarian, which is still very unstable. Um, but for the sake of I guess the lower rep schemes, so like going on like four reps, like making sure that we're using a stable piece of equipment like a hack squat that we can push hard on um, rather than say, I don't know, a barbell back squat or something else. So right. exercise selection, I think people change it way too much than mm. what they should. I like to give like an, a movement or a piece of equipment, like a good opportunity for my body to learn the skill and then be able to adapt and then build strength and then push and then change it. Right. I think you don't need to change exercises every four weeks. With accessory stuff, I feel like you can change it a lot more frequently because you don't have to learn the skill so much with mm. like a line leg curl. It's very straightforward. So I change that a lot more than what I do my A series. Right. So do you like to use that as, I guess maybe, maybe you don't even realize you're doing it, or maybe you do. Um, so we're doing more stable fixed movements as compounds. So you would choose more unbalanced mm. things for um, accessories yeah, intentionally for sure. because for you're sure. thinking we're not getting enough coordination stimulation yeah. or dynamic stimulation for the joints or nervous system yeah. so you do it for accessories and then vice versa yeah. when we do higher volume stuff you do less coordination based stuff because it probably may, may more risk mm. to screw things up yeah i think you need to have a balance between like more dynamic and stable movements right. i think that's something i always do is i look at a program and i go do i have enough dynamic stuff that's also challenging those stabilizing muscles yeah. um as well as compound things like a hack squat where i can just train to muscular failure yeah so for a beginner, how important do you think it is to train, say, in a four to six rep range? It's going to depend. It's going to depend, like, how much beginner. Let's, um, say, let's say it's the first time. Let's go to the extreme spectrum. Like, we're saying um, it's very important to train to failure and well, more important to lift heavy weights yeah. to be able to stimulate your high threshold motor units to build muscle mass. But what about a beginner? Does that mean they don't get any much of a response when they first start in the gym and lift very, very heavy? I feel like a beginner is going to get a response from pretty much anything or most okay. things that they do. Yeah. I feel like if the primary goal is skill acquisition for a lot of stuff, I like to keep um, like reps and sets a bit higher so that they can have more opportunities, more reps to be able to learn a skill. But if you're doing something like a leg press, mm. like yes, there's a little bit of skill in yeah. there to be able to learn how to use the machine and set yourself up and foot placement and all that sort of stuff. But I don't think there's... Like, I still think lower rep ranges are still very valuable for beginners. Yeah, and you think, is that kind of a big goal of yours to be able to progress a beginner to that low rep range mm. as quickly as possible, as yeah. safely as possible, of course, because mm. that's where they're going to get the most benefits? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think everyone should be able to explore lower rep ranges and not always stay in that high rep um, basket. Otherwise, you just end up doing like cardio with your resistance training and not really like challenging um, different, I guess, strength curves and, and different energy systems in your actual training. All right. And is that something you see women making a lot of mistakes with? Yeah. They don't really train heavy? Yeah. Oh, I, I think it's changing like stereotypes mm. and stigmas, but there is still a lot of like, I guess, misinformation about like that burning that you right. should feel. Oh, yeah. I don't feel burning on a glute drive when I'm doing a set of four. It's just right. heavy. Yeah, and yes. I think that's why it's important to have a bit of yin and yang with your programming and not just always do the same thing. Otherwise, you're not going to make progress. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, most of what we've done today, I don't feel that intense burn or contraction even. Um, I feel tired by the end of the set. Mm. Like I couldn't do a fifth rep maybe. But um, it's not the same as 12, 15 reps. Out of a training, say 12 months, in an ideal state for muscle building, how often do you want somebody, how many months do you want somebody spending lifting like this? Oh, that's gonna depend, I guess, on their training experience, but a good portion of it. Well, like, let's say for us, like how, in an ideal world, how long should we spend out of 12 months doing this? Should it be six months? Should it be more like eight months? I would say at least six months. Okay. Yeah, yeah. training with good intensity, yeah. at least. Yeah, you want to bias heavier weights as much as you can versus the more voluminous. Yeah, okay. and even in accumulation phases, mm. like even when you're, I guess, doing more volume, you're still pushing yourself close to failure yeah, on a lot of sure. those things. It's just when the reps or the sets 
the volume goes down, your intensity goes up. It's like a seesaw, right. right? You need to be able to do both. So you can't just keep building up intensity if your volume's also high. Absolutely. You know, it needs to be one way or the other. And that's why it's important to cycle because if you spend time building up accumulation, then over time your intensity is going to be able to go up too and you're just going to be able to make progress. Right. That makes sense. That makes sense. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing the rest of the next 20 weeks and how it progresses. I mean, you're feeling pretty good, yeah, so far? Yeah, I feel fine. Not I suffering? Mean, no. Prep doesn't suck until like the last eight weeks, I feel. Well, that's going to be fun. Yeah. 12 weeks to go. Three <laughs> months to go. Yep. As always, if you guys have any questions at all for myself or Sherelle, drop in the comments below. Um, don't forget to do the things like the thumbs up and the subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll see you all next time.